Hey, welcome to the Whip Workshop, where we take a look at any work in progress Bionicle mocks that you might have going on right now, and I give you any bit of advice that I can to help you improve them and move them into being a fully completed mock. So I have now decided. Last episode, I said I didn't quite know what the day was that I was going to upload these. I reckon every second Tuesday is when I'm going to do so. Uh, so you can expect these every second Tuesday. As usual, we've got three work in progress mocks that were submitted to the submission email, which, so you know, is the email you're currently seeing on your screen. So if you want to submit any of your work in progress stuff that you might have going on right now, that's how you can do so. Uh, do, of course, um, make sure when you do submit it to the submission email, you can put as many pictures as you want, uh, but definitely include somewhere that this is for the WIP workshop specifically, because otherwise I'm going to assume it's for the Bionicle Inspiration series. Uh, and if you have anything you specifically want me to focus on uh, with whatever you're submitting, uh, make sure to put that in as well, and I'll do my best to target that with the critique and other things that I'll say about the mock. And speaking of mocks that we're talking about in this episode, let's actually talk about those mocks. So we've got some mocks, oh, well, some whips here from three talented builders. The first one is by Lego Metal. And I believe this is his self-mock as well. And this is a, 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 some of the ever-continuing ever, uh, revamps of a self-mock here. And it's looking super, super fly. I'm loving how it's looking so far. Definitely one of the things that really stood out for me is the beautiful color scheme that this mock has. The, the, the dark blue kind of up against the trans uh, light green there is absolutely gorgeous uh not a color scheme i've seen all that often but it really works well and also this sword design as well uh, i kind of like the idea of a white blade now i believe um this self mark here has had uh, white blades in multiple iterations of it but this specific design looks awesome looks really really cool in some of these pictures as well lego metal's shown two different types of head designs here uh, and both of them look really really cool I, I actually really like this one specifically i think there's a lot more sort of smoother uh, textures to it, and I think that uh, kind of better complements the rest of the stuff. So if you are debating between the two of them, I'd say that, but why don't we por que no las dos this? And maybe do a bit of both, because looking at this other head design here, I really like the the kind of um, large sort of horn that's coming out of the top of the head design here. I think some of the studded uh, textures on this maybe don't work as well, but I really like that horn design, so I'd love it if you could kind of combine the two in some way. Uh, and honestly, that um, kind of reminds me a little bit of the uh, a good old Pokemon known as Heracross. Um, so I kind of like that. I don't know if, if that's a, a little too too much for you if you don't really want uh, too much of like a Heracross influence on your self-mock there. But uh, I certainly see notes of that. And that could be cool to kind of expand upon it if you could kind of essentially combine the two head designs into one. That'd be awesome. And so in terms of where you could take this next, because looking at what you've got so far, it looks like you uh, you still have to work on the arms. Maybe there's a few other things you're um, still working on. But uh I was I was quite taken by that Heracross idea, and I ended up finding this really cool image of kind of like a I literally just googled Mecha Heracross, and this came up, and I think it's I think it looked like first off it looks super cool. But one thing I like about this is how they've taken the the kind of look that Heracross's lower arms have, uh, and kind of turned them into weapons. So they kind of have that uh, they almost look like kind of blades, like energy beams or something like that. It's cool. I almost kind of like the idea of maybe if you did something similar to that, because one of the coolest elements of your mock so far is that the trans yellow of it looks so nice, it pops so well. Uh, and at the moment it's kind of just a more aesthetic and kind of just sort of flowing energy on the mock to, to some degree. I kind of like the idea that maybe that's sort of, um, it can also be used as like weapons uh, and you can kind of continue that trans yellow down onto some sort of blade or something uh, on the lower arms. And, and whether you kind of want to do something you know, similar to that image of these sort of two two blades that kind of angle down or, or maybe you kind of want to do like an assassin's creed like kind of blade coming out of the wrist and maybe it could be a much larger blade in trans um the, the trans uh, light green or it could be a, a bit of a smaller blade you know uh, certainly one of the cool things about these new hero um hero factory these new ninjago sets that are coming out is there's a lot of that uh, trans light green color in it which i often call trans yellow but that is incorrect um Something that's so cool about that is, yeah, you've got a lot more of those you can be playing with, and there's a whole bunch of those smaller blades in those colors, uh, and then there's even those very large blades as well, which are beautiful pieces. Um, so maybe, maybe that could uh, somehow work uh, as uh, little wrist blades or something like that. It's an option you could consider. But something else I like, uh, I've been watching Sword Art Online recently, so I was slightly taken by that, but I kind of like the idea of using those Digiblade um, swords from the newer Ninjago sets 
and um, you know, maybe finding a little bit of a way of attaching it in some fashion, but kind of maybe even giving your mock some sort of like wings like this. And whether they're wings or not, I guess is kind of up for debate. It could even just be some sort of like, uh, you know, like less of a weapon and more just these uh, four sort of floating blades behind him that you can kind of just sort of signal forward and they fly out and it's some sort of like a ranged attack like that. That could be interesting as well. Um, yeah, maybe maybe this mock just doesn't suit wings, but I kind of like the idea of some sort of apparatus at the back, whether it's a weapon or just aesthetically he just has these uh, sort of floating blades behind them. Uh, it could be interesting. I don't know. That's just a thought. And, um, you know, of course, you don't have to do it, but uh, it definitely would look nice uh, experimenting with some of those newer pieces there because they, they work pretty well with the already existing color scheme you've got going here. So um, there's a few, few little uh, tidbits from me there. Hopefully that helped if, uh, if it didn't. And by the way, I should pre preface this. Uh, if, if, if I do put your mock on and you're like, hmm, that didn't help. <laughs> That's fine, you know? And who says what I say has to help you? If you do want me to say a little bit more, I'm more than open to. Head over to any of my social media, shoot me a message and say, yeah, hey, have you got any more advice? Because what you said was, was all right. Didn't really help, though. Um, then by all means. But, uh, you know, I'm just providing my two cents, of course. So um, really nice work there, Lego Metal. Love your work. Looking forward to seeing you finishing this one off. So now let's move on to the second whip in this uh, whip workshop episode, and this is by Jackzilla Productions. So something I love about these images, now I know you had sent me newer images of this, I've already lost them on Discord, um, unless this is the newer images, and I just didn't realise that I got them from the email you sent me. Besides the point though, I'm not going to cover specifically certain things on the, the images, so I think some of the general, general kind of greater principles will apply, even if you have made a little bit of uh, a few changes recently to this. Uh, but besides the point, one thing I love about this is this sword, like I was saying. Um, just a much kind of larger broadsword. I feel like it's really uh, kind of a, a bit of an accent point on this. Uh, really kind of like, uh, you know, you look at certain animes and other TV shows and things and specific, like, characters. Uh, often the sword can be such a defining character trait of the character or such a, a defining thing for them. And, uh, I kind of get those vibes for this. Uh, and so a lot of the little inspiration things I'm going to show you soon, uh, I think, kind of great rela uh, greatly relate to that. Uh, so I really like that the sword looks so awesome here. Uh, a couple of these images here, some of them he has the silver uh, Mask of Life mask, and some of them he has the gold one. And then he's also got those little bits of gold um, Hero Factory armor bits on the bottom there. Uh, in my opinion, I actually reckon the key to orange and silver looks fine. I almost reckon you could probably get, get you know work pretty well if you just got rid of that gold there. Um, unless you kind of want some cool thing like he has uh, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, his body... Like his mask, when he uses his mask power, it turns gold, and he has other little armor bits that turn gold. Maybe you could do something like that, but I don't know. I reckon just silver and key to orange would actually work quite well. Maybe, maybe trying that might be something to do there. In your email, you said that you were struggling a little bit with the lower legs. Um, so I'll kind of branch off into a few other ideas that I had that you could try for this mock. Um, some of it relates to the lower legs. Some of it is just other additional things you could try and add to the mock, which I think could uh, really turn it from a cool mock into a, a really, really great mock. So what I was saying about the sword before and this kind of knight-like look, I kind of found a few images like this where people have really ham, big, cool-looking swords that are kind of more character-defining in, in some degree. Uh, and I love this more kind of noble knight look. You know, you take a look at the legs specifically, looking very uh, sort of armor-like, kind of having those kind of more refined, curved textures to them. So maybe studying and looking at some, um, you know, some of the silver pieces in your collection, some of them that are a bit more sort of smoother and uh, refined-looking, uh, that sort of stuff could work well on the leg design there. But certain things on this mock that I love is these big old shoulder pads there. You know, they kind of have this uh, this ornate kind of lion look to them. But uh, maybe you could do that to your mock too. Add these kind of larger kind of shoulder pad uh, armor look to the mock. Uh, it could be an interesting take, you know, kind of playing around with some of your silver pieces and seeing if you can uh, get that to work. And then also introducing a cape on the back here. That could work as well, giving him this very sort of um, king's guard kind of royal look to the knight. Um, it's, a, it's a thought at least. So there's some uh, interesting stuff there that it could apply to your mock. Alternatively, this is less of kind of like a royal looking knight. You know, maybe that's not quite the aesthetic you're going for, but this is, I feel quite similar. Again, we see some uh, similar points here with the leg design, but w what I like here is uh, that the knee pad kind of has, has its own distinct bit of armor. So maybe you could do something similar like that, like get a, a sort of smaller Hero Factory uh, shell piece in silver and actually put that where the knee pad is. Uh, to, to really kind of differentiate where the knee is on the mock. That could be an option. Additionally, this mock also has a cloth piece, but it's uh, a waistcoat kind of cloth piece. And, you know, we, we've seen in the last Biss episode um, somebody using 
uh, a sword piece, but that was kind of more as uh, re resembling a robe. So you could do something similar if you don't want to put any cloth there or the cloth that you do have just doesn't really work as a waistcoat. You could put a blade kind of hanging down like that and it could resemble kind of flowing cloth. It's another option. Again, we also see a very similar um, shoulder design on this. You know, maybe you don't want to do that shoulder design, but that's just a, a different way of approaching it, a slightly different look to it, a little less ornate and a bit more refined. That could work for your mock. Um, yeah, some stuff there that could work. But moving on to actual Lego stuff that could inspire you here, um, I keep suggesting the idea of cloth. You know, I, I, personally, I think cloth always works really well on uh, on a mock. So if you do want to introduce cloth, here's another different option that you could add on to it, uh, more of kind of like a cowl or like a poncho almost here on uh, Dylan Meave's mock here, which is known as Sparky. Really, really nice mock that he's made here. Perhaps you could do something similar like that, and even a nice little kind of buckle in the middle there with that uh, gold dish in the middle. Something like that could work well. Also, even the kind of belts that are on this mock. Maybe you want to give your uh, your character here a sort of like uh, utility belt or just like uh, some sort of bag or satchel that uh, they take with them on their quests and adventures. It could be a fun little detail you could add in. Moving on to another Bionicle mock that uh, there's certain things in there that I think could help you out. This is a mock by Mr. Boltron and is called Urai the Psychic Knight. So this mock actually uses Knight's Kingdom armor pieces on the lower legs. And, you know, I was saying that your mock seems to, at least in my opinion, have a bit of a knight-like aesthetic to it. Knight's Kingdom armor was made for knights, so that could be something you could do if you have Knight's Kingdom in your collection, of course. And some other little details here that I think your, your mock could benefit from. If you did want to go for a more ornate look, you could do something very similar with the armor here, kind of getting a lot of more sort of small, intricate silver pieces and kind of layering them on the mock in, in, a, in a more ornate, fancy-looking armor design. Or even having it flow down as a waistcoat here using some of those uh, weird kind of like marbled, like crystal pieces that came on some of the G2 later wave sets of uh, Bionicle there. Uh, or even this um, clip brick-built little, uh, little uh, sort of cloth element that's kind of coming out of the waistcoat there. Something like that could also work on the mock quite well, at least in my opinion. You know, and I have a very specific aesthetic in mind that I'm at least seeing with this mock. You could be looking at it and going, oh, I was aiming for something a little bit different. And hey, that's okay. But hopefully some of the suggestions that I've made have uh, in some way influenced uh, where well, you could be taking those leg designs or the rest of the mock uh, in a different direction in some fashion. So hopefully that's helped. Looking forward to seeing that whip all finished off. It's a good point, by the way. If your mock does appear in the whip workshop and you do end up finishing it, 100%, go to the Discord server. Chuck up a picture and tag me in it, because I'd love to see it all finished up and done. And that applies to you, Jackzilla. Do it. All right, final mock here, final whip. This is by Dave Foreman, and this one actually had a name. Now, most of the time, I don't say the names of whips, but this one had one, so I'm going to say it. This one was called Calamity Harpy. It was pretty cool. Pretty cool name. So I'm liking where this is going. I'm really liking that this is using Nexonite pieces, because as an AFOL who dabbles in system and bionicle, let me tell you, system builders hate Nexonites, and Bionicle builders, they seem to like it, but only some people seem to like it. People people have this nice appreciation for it, but you just don't see it being used that much. And that last wave of Nexonites, actually, I don't think that was the last wave of Nexonites. This specific wave of Nexonites that had the kind of little rock golem villains, there were some interesting, really cool pieces in there, and I love that you're using these wings from that wave. It's super, super cool to see. And I think the wings look great that you've done so far, implementing them in with some CCBS stuff there. Pretty cool, nicely done. But I almost reckon, because you are using these Nexo Knight pieces, obviously when they were designed, they had that specific aesthetic to them that kind of, in my opinion, lends itself nicely to Nexo Knights. Nexo Knights is one of those LEGO themes, and I feel like a lot of LEGO themes lean into it, where there's a slight goofiness to them, where, you know, especially the villains in that specific wave, a lot of them were kind of more rock golems, and they kind of had that... Uh, big brutish look to them, but they look really dumb, you know, which I don't want to insult some uh, minifigures' intelligences here, of course, but that was the aesthetic that they had, was just, you know, very powerful, but not that bright, and, you know, the heroes come in with their creativity and ingenuity, and they can outsmart the villains and overpower them with their, you know, bravery and will and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I kind of like the idea of maybe leaning into that with this character. I, I, I feel like, especially the fact you've named this mock, you probably have a very specific thing in mind, but... Uh, let me take you on a journey here and show you um, some ideas that I had, simply because you're using the Nexonite elements. So one idea I had, this is a system mock here, and it is built by Chris Perron, and it's called Wall Golem. So something I like about this, I mean, yes, it's a castle diorama, so to some degree it kind of fits in with the Nexonite theme here, but I actually want to not really focus on the castle elements on this, and more on the character that the face on this mock has. The fact that the face is more sort of inside the body, you know, the elbows are a lot higher than normal, 
it does give him that look of being very strong, but maybe not too bright, but, uh, you know, also kind of enjoying battle and, you know, hungry to fight and all that sort of stuff. There's a lot of character being conveyed here. So it kind of almost like the idea of you doing that. At the moment, I don't think there's a head design on this mock. There is not, unless you're like, actually, Ben, the head design is on the, the, the waist or something weird, and I didn't notice it. But I like the idea of maybe doing that, having the head design a little lower than normal and kind of giving them that look. This mock does look a little bit more feminine, at least at the moment, at least the way I'm looking at it now. But that could be an interesting take on it as well. You know, doing that, moving the head design into a different area on the mock, giving them a more sort of brutish look, could be an option. But another option, especially if this mock is more feminine, uh, this is a really, really nicely designed mock by Anton Sunderstrom. It's called Alice the Gollum. And what I love so much about this mock is that it is uh, very clearly kind of rock inspired. You see these rocky textures specifically on the arms and the lower legs and a few other areas, but it's a lot more humanoid and the rock elements are sort of not necessarily an afterthought because that's not the right word here, but it's the humanoid aspect is what's more dominant and the, the rock aspects are a little more subtly put in. So maybe that's an approach you want to do too. If you, if you are looking to go that more humanoid route or route, however you want to pronounce that word, uh, you could do something like that. Like very subtly put in those trans clear kind of more rocky textures to them. Um, I say that because I always felt that those Nexonite pieces had that more kind of crystalline, rocky, rock golem look to them. Um, you could do something like that. Something like this mock here. Little subtle notes of it. Uh, but, but, uh, but, but pulling it back a lot and focusing more on the humanoid aspect. It's an option you could look at. I think this mock here has done it almost flawlessly. So you could do something similar, my boy. Going back to the mock you've got at the moment, it could just be the lighting in these images here, because, you know, you haven't kind of, uh, you know, gone into a studio or got all the good lighting in a white background yet, uh, which is okay, of course. But I almost wonder if, because you're playing with two very distinct trans-coloured pieces, I'm not sure if they're competing with each other at all. You know, I, by all means, please prove me wrong, but I, I wonder if maybe uh, kind of doing something so that it's, it, it's, it's like... Uh, you know, like a geode, for example, uh, you have the rock, which is the kind of gray or maybe a black color, and then poking out of the rock is the amethyst or the diamond or whatever other uh, mineral is underneath it. Uh, it might be an interesting take to do that, to actually strip away one of those translucent colors and focus more on uh, one and then accent it up against uh, another color and having it look more like, yeah, a geode or a rock face or something like that. It could be an option. That being said, of course, those wings do have those two distinct colors, so it might be interesting to find different ways that you can kind of block out the colors and maybe have little subtle hints of trans blue, but the trans purple is a little more dominant or something like that. It's something you could at least try. I don't know. It could work. Because I don't know if the colors are getting a little too busy or not, but uh, again, please prove me wrong. Perhaps I'm like, hey, Dave, that's not going to work, and then you, you fasten up your goggles and you say, oh, strap in, Ben. I've got some plans, and you finish. I'm like, oh, I was wrong, so please prove me wrong. But let me show you a few non-LEGO examples that I think uh, could be interesting directions to take this mock. If, you know, where it is now you're not too happy with, or you want to branch out and try something a bit different. Or I'll just I'll just throw a whole bunch of different ideas, see if they stick. They're all kind of focused around that rock golem look, and hopefully it helps. So I like this rock golem look specifically, the idea that these rocks are kind of floating and it's being held together by some mysterious force. So maybe what's holding it together is those translucent elements you're using, or maybe you want to play around with some trans clear elements and actually have it be kind of uh, uh, more of a floating golem like this. It could be an interesting approach. So like this idea, kind of playing off what I was saying before, I think it's actually a really good visualization of that, of having all the translucent, tra that's a word that will not come out of my mouth right now, translucent elements, focusing them all in one specific area, so like this, kind of on the back of the mark, and then having the rest of it be grey or black, more you know, rock-focused colours, uh, so that the, the wings and the crystals are kind of emerging out of the rock to some degree. It could be an interesting way of doing it, and of course you have little bits poking out here and there, it might be an option to consider. Or you're sitting here and you're saying, no, 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 Ben, it's not at all what I wanted. Well, who knows, maybe one little slight thing I'm saying here might inspire you with something, who knows? Or if not you, Dave, maybe someone else. But let's continue. I just like the idea of this uh, this sort of rock golem here having much larger hands. You know, m maybe you want to kind of play around with proportions a little bit. You know, give them slightly longer legs, bigger hands, larger wings, a really tiny head, something like that. It could be an interesting way of approaching it. Well, final one here. This is a little bit similar to that kind of trans green one we were seeing before. Uh, playing around with, you know, giving them a snake tail, giving them hands that don't even have fingers having the rock kind of appear out of the arms instead. Different ways of doing it. Lots of different ways you could approach this sort of rock golem here. 
And of course, all of this was based off the fact that you're using Nexonite pieces. And I, I think there's a lot of life in those Nexonite pieces. It'd be really cool to see that shine uh, on this mock here. So hopefully I haven't taken it in the different direction that you were planning on going, especially because this is more of a harpy than it is a golem. But hey, you know, sometimes getting something that's uh, completely off base and has nothing to do with what you're originally planning uh, can actually inspire you even more or make you think outside of the box and branch out in a different direction. So even if you look at this and you're like, this is nothing like what I was thinking, eh, maybe sit with it a bit more, see where it goes. Or it doesn't go anywhere and this was an entirely pointless endeavor, but it's helped someone else. We never know. Anyway, that's been it for the Whip Workshop today. Hopefully you enjoyed taking a look at these three work in progress mocks here. And hopefully if you're building any of your own work in progress mocks, some of the pictures and mocks that I've been showing you have got those creative juices flowing yourself and you yourself can uh, advance your work in progress mock and make it into a completed mock. And speaking of completed stuff, if you'd like to make your whip a completed mock and you want to submit it to the show, I'll say it again. Here's how you can do so. It's through the submission email you're currently seeing on the screen. Submit as many pictures or as little pictures, or as much of a description, or as little as a, as a description as you would like. Whatever you submit, that's okay, but make sure to label it somewhere in the email as a WIP or a work in progress or something like that, because pretty much what I do is I jump on the, the submission email, I go into the search bar, and I type WIP. And whatever appears, I put it in an episode. So uh, it'll be a lot easier for me to find it in the email if you do it that way. But that being said, I tend to look at majority of the email so hopefully it won't be uh, too difficult i just hate for it to get lost in a sea of other submissions and things if it's a bit easier to locate that'll definitely help me out there anyway be sure to check the links in the description to the other social media that all of these builders have not everyone of course will have social media because sometimes uh people don't actually have social media and they're just emailing this to me but uh, be sure to check that out and speaking of social media my social media is there as well you can head over to my social media my instagram facebook Flickr, all that sort of stuff see the mocks that i'm making see the things that i have going on i even have a few new things going on pretty soon that i'll be announcing uh, on the channel soon that are non-lego related but uh still nerdy and super cool so uh, all that's going underway at the moment busy with that and uh, enjoying that so uh, stay tuned for that. I, uh, I'll keep it in the dark as to what that is right now, but get excited about that. Or if you jump on a Discord, I'll probably just tell you. Anyway, that's it. Hope you enjoyed, guys. Get to building some whips and make them some finished marks. Bye for now. See you soon.